Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. Have you ever just really craved something colorful? You just have to do something colorful, whether it's a bright shirt or a painting that you're working on or what have you. Today's video is showing you how some days I just gotta have some color and I'm gonna find it in any way I can. Uh, I have been painting so many portraits lately, um, which is wonderful. I'm very grateful for any commission work that I have and portraits are often um, a, something that I do a lot of, but I had to take a break just to paint this particular bird species known as the Southern Ground Hornbill. And I like this bird because it has a bright red face, so it offers that bright color, but it also has the contrast because it's basically a black bird. It's the, the Southern Ground Hornbill is the largest of the hornbill species. And I was, uh, I wanna thank the good folks at the Dow Zoo. Uh, Josiah, thank you so much for sending me some really good references uh, of this particular species. And uh, yeah, so I'm getting ready to get, jump into this painting. So again, thanks for joining me. And if you're here, it's because you like to watch painting tutorials and product reviews and anything art. So thank you so much for being here. And if you're my subscribers, thank you. And if you're not my subscribers, please consider. Go ahead and hit the owl and we'll be good. And again, let's go ahead and jump in on this fun, colorful piece of the Southern Ground Hornbill. And here you see the muse for today's painting, the Southern Ground Hornbill. He's a pretty fancy looking dude and will make a fabulous looking painting. Now in today's painting, I'm starting off with a little bit of a vine charcoal sketch. And I like using vine if I'm actually sketching on my canvas because it erases easily and it doesn't mark up my canvas like graphite does. And I can move it around and change and and morph my piece till I'm happy with it. And I, you know, I don't always do this, but when I do, I do use fine charcoal. Once I'm satisfied with the sketch, I do a very quick underpainting using acrylic paint. And this is a very, very simple sketch. It also sets the uh, charcoal. In, in. Uh, my oil paints painted uh, squirted out here and this is the palette I'm working from at least uh, the starting palette if you will I'm sure I'll be adding lots of other colors but I have a orange it's called a I want to say Daralide orange by Plaza Art this is um, Carmen red no I'm sorry this is French red deep vermilion Carmen then I have my cooler reds. I have um, alizarin crimson, and then I have some uh, quidacridones magenta, and I believe one's quidacridone um, red, but it's they're very close. Then I have uh, diaxazine purple. I have, oh uh, goodness, what is this blue? It's, um, I'll have to check back with that one. This is ultramarine blue, black, and white. And this is our starting lineup for the southern ground hornbill. Okay, now I'm actually laying down some oil paint. And since I already did the acrylic underpainting, it allows me to just build upon the values that I, I created just using the two colors of acrylic. And you can see that I'm you know, I have my cool reds and my warm reds, and the cool reds do recede, and those will go create the folds that you'll see later in this bird's neck. So I'm just kind of, you know, popping it down, laying in some color, and the bird is already taking form. And I have to tell you, I'm already digging this piece, even in this early stage of this bird. Once 
once I've got it all blocked in, I've got to go ahead and put in the background. And you know I'm digging this color because anytime I get to play with turquoise, oh, what fun, what fun. And I'm just kind of laying it in. I'm actually adding a little bit of uh, cadmium green into the mix too. So yes, these are fun. And if you do like doing uh, watching painting tutorials, you know, be sure to check out my Patreon page and get to see a lot of uh, painting tutorials, full length, uh, uncut, no time lapse, and uh, and and paint with me. Yeah, you can see I am totally digging it. I'm adding the colors and I'm going nuts. And here you can see just all already this palette is quite a mess, but it's it's still fun. Besides the beautiful red face, it was the eyelashes that attracted me to this bird. And of course, when doing eyelashes and this type of thing, I like using a dagger brush. They make hairs just beautifully. And you can tell I'm wanting to paint into a wet edge, so I wanted things to be a little bit soft. So those eyelashes are, are quite fluffy, if you will. And you can see here that the reason I have to put down the cool reds first is when I lay the hot reds on top, you get those folds, especially in the eyes, and you can highlight each little fold with a little, even a lighter color, and it creates that three-dimensional appearance. I am just having so much fun, I can't even tell you. This, this truly was a wonderful change of pace for what I've been doing lately, so, um, it was much needed and uh, thoroughly enjoyed. Now a bamboo walking cane makes a fabulous small stick. So this allows me to rest my hand on the uh, painting and not run my hand through wet paint. So you'll see me moving the stick around and I can rest my hand. It keeps it steady so I can get in there and do the fine detail. Yeah, I am really lucky to have that little, uh, that little cane. It works out great. What you see me doing here now is I'm oiling my piece down because I had been away from it for a day and I like to paint into a wet edge. So I'm painting these eyelashes in and then realize quickly that I had too much oil on here and I had to use Q-tips to suck up the oil. So I'm making a mess um, of my pretty blue background here for these smudgy eyelashes. Um, yeah, what a mess, right? So 
I, I do like painting into a wet edge and oftentimes I'll oil it down uh, if, I've, if I've been away for a day. But yeah, I did too much, so I had to fix it. But yeah, I got it. I let it dry out a little bit, sopped up some of the oil, and went back and put the eyelashes in. But in the meantime, I'm doing everything else. And you can see that the details are going in. And again, it's really being very conscious of the color shifts, knowing where your shadows are and figuring out exactly where to put the highlights. And um, yeah, this has been so much fun. I hope you like the music I selected. This is Afrikaani music, and if you're really listening in the background, you're hearing the call of the southern ground hornbill. That kind of boom, boom, boom sound in the background. I just think it's fun to add that in. <laughs> And here, folks, is the completed piece of the Southern Ground Hornbill. Uh, you know, this was fun. This took me about three days in total to complete. This happens to be a 24 by 24 canvas. And you can see the eyelashes were fun. I, I eventually did go back and correct my uh, big oily mess I created earlier. But I think overall, this turned out really well. I. I'm running a, you know, just letting get a close look and see where the detail is and where I have the soft edges and, uh, you know, it was fun. It was really fun. And again, folks, if you have any questions about anything you saw today in the creating of this piece, please leave a comment in the comment section and I'll, I'll get to you. I'll answer those questions for you. And uh, yeah, this was fun. What a fun fella he was to paint, right? He was fun. The color was something that I had to have. You know, it's kind of like cheesecake. Sometimes you just gotta, right? This Southern Ground Hornbill was a lot of fun. I enjoyed, you know, being able to use all the cadmiums and the turquoises and <sighs> it scratched that itch. I needed that. So I hope you enjoyed watching me paint the Southern Ground Hornbill. And if you have any questions about anything I covered in today's video, just leave it in the comments section and uh, I'll get to you. And if you have a suggestion on something you'd like to see me paint, I'd love to know what it is. So yeah, leave it there too. And thanks again. And uh, if you're my subscribers, of course, I'm always appreciative of you. And if you're not, please consider subscribing. So again, until next time here from Kingsport, Tennessee and my uh, studio, I'll see ya. Bye.